it's our featured matchup for this one, the, the carries. It's yeah. 8.22 for Wild Turtle and 4.36 for Double Lift, which is what we said was a little opposite last time. It was Double Lift with that 8.22 in the kills, but that just reaffirms he's providing more utility for the team, helping out the team in more ways than just a split push. On to the Rift, TSM versus Counterlogic Gaming as we kick off day two of Super Week. Crowd a little hype for this one, obviously. Yeah. First game of our six games of LCS here. Super Week Saturday, day two, week eight of the LCS. Ha! And a super quick pause to start this one off. Looks like Expecial is just going to get a chat out. We do see that Spell Thieves once again on the Morgana and the Dorans for Annie, not the Ruby, the Dorans. And to get back to the AD carry matchup, yeah. we did so much talking in that feature matchup about how Doublelift was... He played Sivir and he provided support and move speed <laughs> for his team, and he's not going for the kills anymore. Yet they just swapped again. Wild Turtle's yeah. on Sivir, who can obviously do a lot of damage, but is more of the team support AD carry, and Doublelift is on Vayne. Uh, X-Special, by the way, is just doing a quick restart of his client. He had a pinging bug. So it's rather important for the support to be able to ping things in these games. A quick client restart will fix that issue, and we should be getting back into the game pretty soon. And Special himself is really focused. Thresh, Leona, and Annie. We see if Aphromu mm. has kind of delved out into Alistar, Lulu, Morgana in that bottom lane. CLG has a lot more that they're willing to try. Not that TSM yeah. isn't, but that they're bringing to the table and really kind of getting under teams. Well, TSM has always talked about their generic style of mm -hmm. preparation. It's really shown throughout every season of competitive play they've done. They just pick the champions they want to learn, and they learn how to adapt that to every other team they play against. All right. I actually had a funny interaction with Doublelift and Dexter the other day. I was talking with Doublelift and saying, oh yeah, everyone's playing Support Morgana. You guys going to be trying that? And he just, he was about to tell me how, how great Support Morgana is and all the things that he could do. And Dexter came up, he's like, why do you always tell everyone about what we're going to be playing? You're not allowed to talk before the games. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, don't worry about it. I wasn't going to tell anyone. Yeah, that's why they're doing so well. Dexter's got the lockdown, all the strategies. Mm. Mm. And then I went and told everyone. But it's, yeah. it's too late. They picked Morgana. We're going to see it in the streams. Exactly. Why don't you stream? You and Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Same excuse as XTG. Bad internet sometimes. Oh. I would have figured it was just a ton of like crystal balls in the background <laughs> that you use per day and you're like, I haven't cleaned them up yet. Just can't do it. So we're waiting for this pause to go underway. TSM versus Counter Logic Gaming. <laughs> big big game, rivalry as we say. Mm hmm I think a lot of people are going to be happy with the decision of 70-30, at least TSM fans. But Counter-Logic Gaming is definitely themselves. That's not the percentage they should be getting. Because yeah. with five straight wins, they have eight more to go before mm -hmm. that win streak is really well, something they can take. a long ways away. It's a very long way away. But seeing them beat TSM here would be a huge step towards that and would affirm the fact that they can do it over and over. You can hear all those pings coming out right now. Checking to make sure it's working just I good. I think it's working. Sounds good. And there's the top lane duel. Now, this is interesting because normally these guys feel safe up there. There's actually a trap being plotted by CLG. They're going to try and move into that brush. And they've done it. Don't go too far, Dyrus. He's trying to be aggressive. <laughs> He's a little low. There's no reason for him to get too close to Nien. Oh, if this worked, it would be genius. This happened, actually, to Aphromu at the very start of the season. He got three-man ganked. It was actually during Battle of the Atlantic, I believe got three-man ganked in the bottom lane brush and just ruined his morale for the game. Nien doesn't want Darsh to go back. Even if Odd One comes over, it's, it'll uh -oh. still be a 3v2. Careful. It, the Dark Binding uh -oh. has to be perfect. Odd One, no! Odd One, oh no! He goes to Spider form! I don't think this is what he wanted! The Itsy Bitsy Spider goes down! First blood, 1 minute 30 for CLG. And it went to Double Lift's vein. Those cheeky level one plays. You know, those top lanes, it's all fun and games. Until someone gets hit by a dark binding and stunned into the wall. Oh, reminiscent of the Reginald Zillion. Unfortunate. <laughs> one important thing to note is we don't often see first bloods before the two minute mark. Mm. They're only worth 60% of the gold that they would be at the four minute mark. So normally it would be 400 gold for the kill, 200 gold for assist pool. Yeah. It is 60% of that for this one, so. Uh, not as valuable of a kill. Double if actually can't buy any full items off of that, but he will be substantially farther towards his yeah. first map scepter. Surprised there wasn't at least some inkling that there would be a lane swap with the Morgana, or rather the Vayne versus Sivir. Not an awesome matchup for Double if, so. It's actually a little surprising that they're staying with the lane swap and that wasn't just for the kill. 
Simmer and Annie are going to be able to shove in that turret very quickly. And Morgana and Vayne aren't exactly Jinx level as far as pushing turrets down. If TSM wants to do the turret swap with this, they could absolutely kill their turrets faster than CLG can and maybe get a bit of an advantage that way. Very aggressive invade here. This is what you but get. But one's not, not going to be there, so this is easily taken by Dexter. And that was really clever what just happened there from CLG because yeah. they took their own blue to the other blue and Odd One had nothing to counter with. He's going to be taking a white and pushing the lane, but as far as buffs are concerned, Dexter's got a big lead, double blues. Trying to get to that bottom lane so they can at least counter the turret damage that's going to happen in the top lane. Yeah, we see Nian going back to the jungle. So back to the turrets. We may even go to second tier on this one. It usually happens around five minutes if the teams do stick with this strategy. And then they both kind of go into the stalemate mode. Who can push faster after yeah. these turrets go down? Yeah, I wonder if Dyrus is going to try and hold that turret at all or just completely give it away. One thing to note is that Jarvan will give the entire team 10% attack speed when he puts down a standard. Maybe help them kill that a little faster. Oh, I was saying Link was going to be the one to come up on the level 2-3, but Reginald really getting a nice body slam in. The Ignite's down. Link can still get an Ignite initiation yeah. down if he gets Dexter at the right time. And these are even with the slight Gragas nerfs that happened mm -hmm. in the 4.3 patch. His body slam, his AD ratio on it is 0.3 in its first rank as opposed to 0.66 at all ranks like it used to be. But Gragas is still a monster burly. Levels pretty much 1-3 through yep. three in lane. Almost nobody can stick with him, and Reginald recognized that went hard for Link. It doesn't seem like it took Reggie too long to get back to his old ways of being aggressive, knowing he can take down one of the strongest mid lanes in North America right now. Doesn't hesitate to do that. Four minutes into the game, he gets a good advantage there. Turn in the top lane is going to be going down. Ooh, Afro Moo could be getting hit up quite hard here. Condemn against the wall. Can the Ignite come out? Afro doesn't get it off. Afro did get very low, but a well, time was done by Double put up. him back from that. Uh, that turret's about to go down as well, so this lane swapping not really hurting CLG as long as TSM doesn't get any additional objectives off of their early turret takes. And it doesn't look like they're pushing for anything extra. If TSM were to have wanted to get something more after taking the bot turret, they would have had to rotate up to the mid lane or even the top lane to stop this. But since they did it, it's didn't. It's just a turret trade, and Double is actually quite ahead in farm. Yeah, that's going to be nice. He has that first kill. That turret gold is going to go to him and Afro move for being close as well. Still the first and only blood of the game. Nian was able to get an assist on that, which is nice because he's on the other side of the map, so getting a little help early was good for him here. Yeah, able to keep up in levels. Mm -hmm. Not what happened to him yesterday when the lane swaps happened. <laughs> He's still level one right now. Yeah, he was on Rise, who couldn't jungle like Shivana has mm -hmm. been doing. Nian taking a lot of these small camps in the jungle while Dexter was actually playing like a laner in the jung or from the jungle position. And uh, top lane Jarvan. It's like Dyrus staying tried and true with a second Doran's Blade to trying to be aggressive, but keep himself alive here. Double lift keeps going hard, trying to get Silverbolt procs on as much as possible. Interesting roam there by Reginald. Losing a few creeps to his turret as well. Yeah. I wonder how passive TSM is going to remain here, knowing that they've kind of been dictated to in the early game thus far, mm -hmm. and they haven't picked lanes that necessarily like that. If they pick Elise in the jungle, who is one of the strongest early game junglers, Renekton in the solo lane, uh, they're, they're expected to actually be winning this early game fairly substantially. But COG with some sneaky moves and good rotations have pulled out an uh, 800 gold lead. Well, it looks like they may pull out a bigger lead. We see Nien and the rest of the team coming down towards bottom. Might be a dragon time here very early in the game. If they can get the positioning, it'd be quite scary. It looks like they're all forming for it. Now, this is the rotation down from oh, oh, Link. Woo. Nice flash for flash. Yeah, tricky flash over that wall. We've seen many of flashes fail on that one. Um, COG getting warded out in the bot lane as well. Gonna have to push this as quickly as possible. Uh, they gotta rotate actually pretty quickly here. Yeah, Nien's gotta get out of there so he can go top and get that farm against Dyrus. Yeah, nothing coming out of this. Not gonna no happen, kills. they're gonna stop him. He's Very smart out. move by TSM here. Great play around the map, good communication. They can stop him again. He's right on a ward. If they are actually still going for Dragon with Nien back in the bottom lane. He's saying, you should be more worried about me than the Dragon Gold we're about to get. Well, it's Dragon Gold, but it's also sacrificing a lot of turret damage mm -hmm. on the other side because Dyrus is off hitting that turret and getting a wave advantage. Now, when they've given this 
Dragon away. It's going to be interesting to see if Dyrus can bully Nien. Nien has been put into a very difficult situation here. Uh, Dyrus level 6, full offensive build, double Thorns against a Doran Shield, Ninja Tabi, Shivana. As far as actual dueling, that is atrocious for Nien. He is going to get crushed by Dyrus if he gets into a fight. Whoopsie. And got it. All right, level six now for Link in the mid lane. Reginald is level seven. He just hit level seven, though. So they are actually a full level apart. Reginald 59 to 42 in that lane, 50 to 30 of CS in the top lane. Dyrus has been having a field day with CS. Got to commend TSM's ward spots. They're really catching where CLG wants to wait for things. Previously, it was a Shivana in the brush. Aphromo was standing in. Now it's Dexter sitting on a ward as well, trying to get a gank. TSM's almost trying to bait this one out. But if they... Whew, this takes a bit of damage. There wasn't much of a bait. Reginald not going to be able to offer too much. Dexter not coming up with anything on that gank. Usually we see him have a bigger hand so far in the game. We'll see how this affects him without getting too much of what he needs right now. Or not much of what he needs, I should check, say. 400 gold in the lead for Counter Logic Gaming. The turrets are even that one being dropped in the top side and the bottom. And about 200 of CLG's extra gold is because Aphromoo has a Frost Fang right now, that new Spell Thief's Edge upgrade. He's getting 200 gold from it thus far on Morgana just from harassing a little bit. Uh, Lane-wise, everything else seems to be evening out. And if we discount that first blood, might be TSM in the hit. And discount that first blood, but don't discount Nian. Dragon's yeah. Descent gets him out. Very scary situation for him there. Dexter was almost on the backside for some help, but I think it would have gone awry altogether. Reggie trying to put the poke under the turret. Good hit onto Link. He's really giving Link a hard time. We've seen Link even be the one to roam. We saw his level five zigs roam the other week to really bring CLG up, but not much can happen this game. Yeah, this turret's getting extremely low, and they might want to have to fight this. They do not want to. There's the lock-in. Nice job. Dexter actually puts himself in front in the end, but may still take too much damage. Get a little too sure of themselves. They should not have been under that turret. They didn't realize how low it was. And so much of CLD's strategy, if we get TSM chance coming through, so much of CLD's strategy is around movement right now. Yen with the Ninja Tabi, that's not really combat effectiveness. So if they get trapped into 2v2s like that, they have to avoid them. They can't get trapped into isolationist lane scenarios. That is not what their item builds or their strategy thus far has been built around. Well, that was enough to make it 700 gold in the lead for Team Solo mid. Second turret going down, and Reginald is now going to be able to open up the jungle by himself. You can see the confidence. He doesn't know where Dexter is right now, but he's really not worried either. Dexter burned his ultimate Yep. in death as well. That's really going to set him back as far as ganks are concerned. Aggressive, see what Link can dodge here. Aggressive Reggie. A good shield on the body slam. Hits him back. Going to have a cast of blue buff. Not to a blue buff. It looks like Reggie may be able to finish enough damage here. He's got to be oh, careful. Dexter barrel. coming back. No ultimate, though. The flash coming in for the flag. Uh, of the flag. And level up on Dexter. He's going to be able to use Ooh. not much in the rest of this fight. Very back and forth. Now, Aframu, a new challenger, approaches on the fight. And he tries to throw out a binding. Everybody's, everybody's just missing a little bit on each engagement. Oh, coming back man. in, double it, flashes flash. the binding! Condemn against the wall! One more shot, and he gets the long-range snipe onto Reginald. Big play by double if landing the skill shots after flashing the stun. Now CLG trying to push on middle and after that crazy engagement in the middle. Wow, everybody was just shrugging off the next attack after the next attack. That one counted, though. Double if making it work for man. himself. CLG's gonna get out of this and they get a little bit of pressure in mid lane. Not too much to work off of, but good this goal. This game is so pivotal right now. Dyrus trying to exert his advantage into the jungle. CLG trying to push him out. Like he doesn't know what he's getting himself into with the Fog of War being on Dyrus' side there. Odd one clearing out. Pink Ward's coming down now from Team Solomid as they try to regain their side of the map. Not losing it too much, but they know that CLG's getting a good upper hand here with double lift on two kills already. The ward play in this game has been really interesting as well. I think TSM is completely outwarding CLG in most of these situations. They're finding the right spots for pink, and they have caught CLG with a lot of their wards as well. Uh, now they're going to try and brute force this push down the mid lane. They've got CLG somewhat contained, and they have all of their opens here. up as well. So CLG might have to fight this off. They're too low. On the hunt, gets thrown down. Turret's going to be the focus still as Nian puts himself in the fight. He goes Dragon's Descent onto Odd One and Turtle trying to Ooh. mitigate a bit of the damage. The Boomerang coming out big with a few of the ricochets is a double kill for a while. 
Yeah, or CLG single, is just rather. not able to go in on this. TSM is too strong as a five-man unit right now. The Gragas and Renekton combined are just brute forcing down these two middle turrets. Huge move there by TSM. Wild Turtle taking two turrets with the team there and getting himself a kill. Not a double kill. Two to two now on the scoreboard. TSM is answering back for everything that CLG's thrown at him. CLG just lost all control. Losing their two middle turrets and also being down the side lane turrets means their jungle is a complete danger zone right now. Uh, just to watch this fight, second time CLG's been stuck around a turret that is about to die and then they get engaged upon. Uh, they're pretty much in full retreat mode, which against Sivir is very difficult to do. Once TSM got the kill, everyone on CLG was low enough and they could just take the second turret. Oh. He's trying to get out, gets the shield down. It's going to get a little bit of a slow, but odd one not having too much of a problem there. 14, 13 minutes into the game, we'll say. Because it is. 4-1 right like it is. Dragon is up, and it looks like CLG may have this one again, and it's not going to be a TSM turret on the other side this time. There's going to be maybe a steal attempt by the odd one, or even just a fight. It looks like Odd One goes in, condemned against the wall. He's low on mana, but still in spider form. Wild Growth goes out. They're going to get the flash Ooh. in. One last ricochet. Actually, the auto attack coming out from Wild Turtle. He as well goes long range on the hits. His double lifted earlier. Reginald's behind them. Kill coming out nicely. We'll see if Reggie can get a good body slam into position. He looks got like dark minded. Yep. Aphromoo saved him there. Huge plays from TSM across the board, though. Uh, the fact that CLG got that dragon, though, keeps them at least a little bit in this game. It is so hypercritical. What is Nian doing? He's two levels behind Dyrus right now. This will be a pretty crazy fight. Like we said, Nian does not have combat stats. He has defensive stats right now. Got move speed at least. <laughs> a little bit of Dragon's Descent with the burnout and some movement speed. Can get him to safety. Where are you going? The team's not getting anything off of this as well, but he's also kind of by uh, just taking Dyrus's time up. I don't know, this is kind of awkward. I think he's going <laughs> to make it out safely though. Well, he got a ward down, so. <laughs> Worth. Congratulations. Completely worth. Ward is down. The white covered. Oh my. Yeah, this dragon fight one more time is just... A lot of damage got bursted down by the odd one. And check the auto attack from Wild Turtle. It'll follow him through that. Yep. Ja. And then the biggest thing here is since the Wild Growth was used on Dexter and he still died, when Link got caught, he had no defensive capabilities left of his own. So it turned into uh, a double kill. That kind of evens out the gold that COG got from yep. the dragon. Turned into a whoopsie. 15 minutes into this one, quickly escalating for Team Solo Mid. Four to two now, four turrets to one, and 3,000 gold in their pocket. Two of them, recent kills have gone over Wild Turtle. They're trying to pressure top lane. And TSM needs to continue to force right now. They have the level 11 on Dyrus and soon to be the level 11 on Reginald. Those are two of the strongest points in the game for Gragas and Renekton. I believe those, I think they both get outscaled. Mm -hmm by Shivana and Lulu if the game were to get to that point. So TSM's gonna keep up this advantage and keep up the pressure. Going very hard on the end. Whoa! Wrong direction. That's a gigantic shield. Dexter trying to get in the fight, but nobody can get out of the cataclysm. They all kind of got themselves stuck in a rock and a hard place. But right now they save the turret. They gotta go back in for another fight. CLG not on the same page at that point. The shields all went down on Shivana as you went the wrong way. They might have actually been able to win that 4v4, but not anymore. They are all way too low from the poke from the blue buff Gragas, and they have to forfeit the second turret. They should not get caught overstaying another turret here. They're very low, taking poke one after the other. Spider's not going to find a home on that one. And it looks like TSM is just waiting. They know they're going to get something out of this. It's just a matter of time for them. CLG is staying in that spot. Well, CLG did go back and heal on Link, but the rest of them are still fairly low, and Yen is still just level 9. He has been heavily denied by the TSM team, and there's another round of Turt Assault by TSM. They know some alts are down on the side of Team Solo Mid, but going into a fight half health is never a smart thing to do, especially when you're already down in the game. As much as they want to save this turret, they're going well, to have to give it up. TSM is not going to give up before it goes down. It's been a long siege up here. 30 yeah. seconds per minion wave. This is the third wave to come in. The end still trapped at level 9. The longer TSM can starve COG from gold, the better. They're going to stay in this situation I'm pretty much until the turret falls or COG forces a disadvantageous fight. 
They're going to have to realize one time after the other the damage on the turret is more stop. than what they can clear. This is going to be Nien again in the fight. The turret goes down. CLG attempts to fight. They have two down already. This is an easy focus now on the double lift. They get him as well, and CLG pulls the same thing. Exactly what we expected to happen there. CLG third time in a row. They have overstayed their welcome at a dead turret and it's cost them every single time. TSM is capitalizing and now they may have an insurmountable advantage as they go for a 17 minute Baron. 7 to 2. We said escalating very quickly here. It was just 15 minutes when TSM was starting that siege. It took them two and a half to put themselves in position for Baron. Position for a very good push after this as well. The entire team's going to be able to get it Chris down. Actually, low. Link's going to be able to do some good damage here. Lulu could really affect this fight. A good Glitter Lance over the wall. Dyrus puts himself in there. The Little Lance is for the steal, but the smite comes down. And Link does not go yeah. for the damage initially. He tries to go for the steal overall. Link had to try, yeah. I think, in that situation. Even though he died and had a very low chance of stealing the Baron against an Elise with smite. Uh, giving up a 17-minute Baron when already being down five turrets to one uh, is basically game over. Take take a look at this fight again. Remember, Nien is level nine, and even no though ult. the ultimate didn't hit him, it still isolated the rest of COG. They didn't have their big ultimates up for this either. It was, you know, COG has had su some success this year with flank attacks mm. on that turret specifically, but that only works when you have a better team fight composition yeah. and you have your skills up. They didn't even have ultimates for that one. TSM rolled through them. It is just COG not being on the same page right now in this game against TSM. And TSM absolutely is on the same page. Yeah. They're the ones making the correct decisions. They're the ones putting the pressure down. They're the ones getting the turrets in what looks like a victory. It's coming in very big. You can see that tweet about Dyrus just now. He did play very strong in the top lane with Nien not getting to where he needs to be in this fight. The team cannot dive in without somebody always dying. Dexter trying to do it this time, but he goes down along with the turret once again. Aphromoo, a good soul shackle this time, but they might not be able to get enough damage back in. Reginald falls to the hands of Double Lift. He tries to the fight, but Odd One gets himself in. The retribution kill actually going to Reggie himself. Nien Ooh. on the ignite, the shield from Lulu, the swipe from Dyrus, and he brings the calling card. In. All told, that is a three for two. Still Baron buff on the rest of TSM, so they should be able to finish off this inhibitor. That was probably the best fight COG has gotten, but it's still not enough. 11 to four here, 20 minutes into the game. The first inhibitor will fall with Baron surrounding Team Solo mid. I don't think they're gonna give up too soon. Bottom turret looks ready to be pushed. Yeah, huge amounts of plays coming out from TSM. Take another look at this one. You can see because he caught Odd One while he had turret aggro, it was a decent start. Mm -hmm. But the Jarvan is just a little lackluster. He's so far behind right now. And because Yen has been a complete non factor in this game, it's like Dexter's playing a solo tank. You can see Siobhan on the minimap way in the back of this fight. Zero impact. It allowed the rest of TSM to push through, get the turret, and the inhibitor. We were saying they're trying to get that team that dives in, but. As far behind as they are, that becomes harder and harder, and TSM is forcing them into these fights now. The inhibitor just walked right up to, and they oh, knocked man. it down without a worry. Oh, good quick move by Dyrus. Nope. Stopped the second slice. Renekton against Vayne, if Vayne plays it properly, actually isn't that amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's why Dexter is the shock factor coming out of the turret, or out of the brush. Now they can just try and five-man this dragon. It doesn't look like CLG can respawn. I do want to talk about those since this game has been so fast paced. Yep. Kind of how TSM got there. They're going to keep going fast. Never mind. We may not have time to talk, but good shields. Black Ooh. Shield as well. Very immune on the double if they know One they more. need to keep him alive. Can't be for Link, though. Not the same result. Definitely the worst performance Link has had on Lulu, but it's just been TSM catching them again and again. This is relentless pressure from TSM. 12 kills, 7 turrets, only 21 minutes in. Team Solo Mid coming strong in the bottom lane now. It does not look like they're going to stop until they get the inhibitor turret. They can easily clear these waves back at CLG. This there's, turret's going to be going there's down. There's an outside chance they could even end the game here. If CLG tries to fight them and loses, the game would be over because of the dead inhibitor in the mid lane. Well, they're keeping Nien off course of initiating on the fight. He's going to look to get a full Dragon's Descent across the team, but they have to be able to follow up. Already, CLG almost poised to fight another one. Half health at the beginning. Second inhibitor because of the link kill was indefensible for CLG. And now TSM pulls away. But this, this advantage is just happening for so many reasons. First off, TSM's ward control was absolutely amazing this game. They caught Dexter almost every time he wanted the gank sitting in a brush. They also tracked Nien extremely well. 
and it was because of the ward control. If we think back really early on in the game, remember the two times they stopped him from recall calling while Dyrus was free farming in the top lane and pushing the turret? Because of that edge, Dyrus never gave it back to Nian. Nian has consistently been two levels behind Dyrus, and that pays off in team fights as well when Nian can't be a factor. Uh, TSM noticed the mobility creep from, T from CLG, how they wanted to move around the map, and TSM trapped them in positions around turrets and found fights that way. Really just a fantastic game plan from TSM, and even better execution. We'll see how fast they can get back into the base. They're going full towards the top lane this time because it's the only inhibitor turret they have to knock down along with its inhibitor. Two open on the other side, which they will not have to worry about. Those lanes will be pushing by themselves in just a minute or so. 12,000 gold up Team Solo Mid, looking to close this one out very early. Baron's gonna be coming up in a minute 30. It's a 12,000 gold lead right now. Yep. This is a nearly impossible position for CLG to defend from. They will soon have two waves of super minions coming into their base. Uh, TSM just needs to wait for that to happen. And then when CLG pulls defenders back, that's why they go early. Going in the fight, can he get the lockdown? They got a good cocoon, which canceled out a bit of the Cataclysm, but he gets it down. A wild gold pops up four members. They're doing good so far, but not many kills coming in. The damage was there, but they couldn't continue to follow up. It was only on the wild turtle. Link now running scared, but I don't know if he's going to make it Yeah, far. CLG had to try a fight before the super minions got there. It was the only way they could have even found a 5v5, but they lost it badly because of the 12,000 gold disadvantage. Yeah. And now TSM looks to push for the win. It's going to be pings into the mid lane. Looks like Expecial's ping is working once again. The whole team's in on this one. CLG really just scratching their heads about this game. It went awry quite early, and TSM made sure to take advantage of any mistakes they found throughout it. Third inhibitor goes down. Doesn't look like they have right. time for the whole thing. We're only 22 minutes in the game, or 24 minutes right, in the game. Right, fast timers, though. People res pretty quick. low timers. Uh, but they cleaned out three sets of inhibitors. A minion killed Link while he was trying to defend. Super minions surprise you. They hurt. With damage every once in a while. Little known fact, the damage aura that super minions get, and armor as well, multiplies with each other. That's why they surrender. Ooh. There's three inhibitors down. Game over.